sometimes pause and wonder at the kinds of people that used to live here. At the kinds of soldiers that have passed through the dusty streets of Maraud's. What were their names? Did they ever come back from their glorious wars? Who will rebuild the churches after the shells have torn holes in them? Who will tell the children that it's safe to come out and play? Before the fateful morning in June 93, the white bear had made his headquarters in a house close to the front. He had drawn a map on the wall for the coming battle. Artur took me there to show me that the map was still standing. There's no place as naturally rich as Gharapag, Artur says. When we go into the mountains, you'll see. It's truly a miracle. It's easy to see why the Azeris are reluctant to lose their grip on this land. Their desire to drive the Armenians out and settle the land is seen everywhere. Deserted Armenian homes have been marked as property by the Azeri soldiers that were once stationed here. The homes themselves have been looted. Their previous owners have either died or fled. Armenian books have been trampled underfoot. Later on that day, some of the men of the compound gathered for a rare treat. It seems that wherever there's a barbecue, you'll find an Armenian. Or is it the other way around? You'll also find horses here. Karapal used to be famous for breeding stout horses, until the Russians came and took them all away for their Cossacks. However blissful this whole thing was, my time in the quiet village was nearing an end. Maragiz is on the way to the Gulistan front. We stop here to wait for the armored personnel carrier, called an MTLB, which will take us up to Yeragir. As we get there by night, I see nothing. The next day, however, a whole new world opens up before my eyes. 
Yeragir is the first mountain outpost. In 1862, the last Armenians left here, driven away by Azeris. The foundations of their homes, their churches, and cemeteries remained. Some months ago, the Armenians returned with a vengeance. Since we're carrying supplies, we continue on for as much of the way as the Antel Bay will take us. Marav Peak, the Everest of Gharapov, looms up ahead. We finally meet up with some of Artur's men out on patrol, and the rest of the journey is made on foot. The path we take winds around the south side of the mountain because the Azeris have lookouts watching from the north for any activity and have been known to bombard the area at the smallest provocation. The green tapestry of these Shaumian hills infects the mind of anyone who sees it. For the moment, it still feels like heaven. Who's the oldest one, I ask? Dead here, they say. He's the oldest. He's 57. He's been fighting nearly all his life. Our doc is the youngest volunteer of the unit, at 19. All of these men were hand-picked by Artur before the mission. Dikran used to fight in another regiment before he joined this one. Haig also used to fight in other regiments. His brother Manuel was shot by a Russian major while trying to break into an armory. We eat anything here, he says. Snakes, frogs, whatever you want. Grass, leaves. We can't get any bread here, any fresh bread. The bread is so hard I can crack my skull with it. At least the water is good. Yeah, the water is good. The air is good too. This is how it is. Yesterday there was a battle, and we all went into the forest. It started to rain really heavily. We didn't have any raincoats to keep us from the rain. While we were in the battle, our raincoats ripped. Our guns got wet. This is a very difficult situation. How many of us had gone under that? Three or four of us have gone the, under the same raincoat. These are Garo's pickles. We brought them a year ago and we're still using them. Every time we eat them, we think about him. What else are you eating? Morning, noon, and night, we're eating this. I don't know what the heck it is. Man, this bread is so hard. If you hit a dead person with it, it would wake him up. 
once Amiran found some tree sap to flavor this with. Our teeth were stuck together like this for a couple of days. This is it every day, and if we can find sugar to go with it, we're happy. At times, we don't even have salt. See those weeds behind you? For a week, we ate nothing but weeds. We boiled them and ate them. Without oil, without salt, we just put them in water, boiled it and ate it. And this bread? This bread is a month old. If it stays any longer, it'll be penicillin. <laughs> Everyone tries hard to avoid the motor shells there as Aries fire over. Melcida, the garrison nurse, showed me a piece of shrapnel that had been removed from a victim some days before. There were two casualties that day, caught off guard. Romik was a father of three and was the hardest hit. In a few days, he was due to go home. After an hour of struggling with inadequate medicine, he passed away. Sensing he was about to give up, Melcida got mad at him. You'll be all right, she said. An hour later, he was gone. I asked Melcida if she was a trained nurse. I've been out here for almost four years, she said. And everything I've learned, I've learned by watching and doing. Everything I've learned, I've learned by seeing. I haven't learned it out of books, from an institute. 